the first Filipino anthropologist and polymath, Dr. Jose Rizal. I stand here today on the beautiful Humboldt State University campus, which derives its name from a prominent and influential German family, the Humboldts, most notably Alexander and Wilhelm Humboldt. I only point this out as Rizal himself was a big fan. In one of his correspondence to his most notable friend and colleague, Ferdinand Blumentritt, Rizal states on November 28, 1886, that he was an admirer of Wilhelm von Humboldt. He referred to him as the famous linguist. Rizal himself was fluent in over 22 languages. He went on to state that he couldn't buy more of Humboldt's books because they were too expensive. As soon as he had some money, though, he said to Blumentritt, he was going to buy all of Humboldt's works. That's how big of a fan he was. Now on to Rizal himself. He entered the world stage as anthropology was still evolving, but his influence and affect are larger and greater than many know. His teachings, works, and passions were silenced, covered up and banned by the Spaniards, colonizers of the Philippines. Dr. Jose Rizal has one unfortunate accolade no other anthrop anthropologist can claim. He was executed for an ethnography. Rizal was born June 19th, 1861 in Spanish colonial Philippines, more specifically the province of Colombo Laguna into an influential family from the area. He was raised and nurtured within the Catholic Jesuit educational institutions. Early on, many of the Jesuit teachers saw Rizal stood out among the rest. Even so, throughout Rizal's educational uh, career, he experienced a great deal of prejudice from the Spaniards. He was a full Filipino, not a mestizo, they said. He excelled in his studies regardless and he was accepted into the prestigious Ateneo de Manila. And out of the entire student body was one of nine that received the honorific title of Sobresaliente, or Outstanding. Rizal then was accepted to the world-renowned University of Santo Tomas and excelled in medical and surgical pathology, as well as obstetrics, Upon completion of his coursework there, he then was accepted into Universidad Central de Madrid in Spain and made the long journey from the Philippines. This is where Rizal was awarded his medical degree. He further went on to attend lectures and seminars at the University of Paris and University of Heidelberg in Germany. It was in Germany where Rizal's anthropological endeavors and interests started to flourish. And, not, and gained steam, but obtained also recognition from prominent figures such as that of the famous pathologist Rudolf Virchow. It was here in Germany where Rizal became a member of the Berlin Ethnological Society and the Berlin Anthropological Society under Rudolf's tutelage. Rizal also developed important and lasting relationships in German anthropology, including Adolf Bastian, one of the founding fathers of German anthropology, along with that of Fedor Jagor, one of the first anthropologists to perform ethnological works in the Philippines. Among um, others were Adolf Meyer, Friedrich Wilcombe, Wilhelm Jost, and other prominent figures in the field of anthropology. In fact, Rizal had become so fond of Germany, he called it his scientific mother country. He continued on at the University of Heidelberg, pursuing a doctorate specialization in ophthalmology inspired by his mother's recent uh, blindness. He was dedicated to restoring her vision, and he eventually did. An interesting side note. During Rizal's stay in Germany, he stayed with 
the prominent Reverend Carl Ulmer and his family. Possible distant relation to our awesome professor, Golden Ulmer? I don't know. It's too early to tell. <laughs> Just joking. Anyways, okay. 1887, Resolve finished. His most important ethnographic work, Noli Me Tangheri, an unconventional ethnography, as it was in the form of a novel, but in all actuality, and most historians agree, was an ethnographic work about colonial Philippines. Rizal, in his wisdom, knew the dangers of criticizing Spain and the crown, labeled his work as a fiction, but since has been verified. All the events and characters were based in reality. Only names and places changed as to avoid the further persecution of his family. This was verified by influential German anthropologist Ferdinand Blumentritt, who stated the novel's characters were drawn from real life and that every episode can be repeated on any day in the Philippines and that these books resulted in results being persecuted as the inciter of revolution. He was eventually tried by the military, convicted and executed, teaching the natives where they stood brought about an adverse reaction from Spain, Blumentritt said. In 1892, Rizal returned from Europe to the Philippines and was considered by the Spaniards an enemy of the state. Immediately, uh, not too soon after his arrival, was exiled to a distant island on the most southern portion of the Philippines, Mindanao, in a place called Dapitan. It was here where Rizal performed many ethnographic works and studies on local populations, also performing many works in the fields of taxonomy and zoology, even secretly sending specimens and analysis and reports to the Anthropological and Ethnographic Museum in Dresden. One of the most significant contributions here gained much fanfare across the globe was his discovery of a flying lizard. A flying lizard, okay? All right. Now, um, upon receipt of this specimen in Germany, uh, the German zoologist Benno Wandelek gave it his scientific name after the result, classifying it as Draco Rizali, or the Rizal dragon. Okay? He also discovered two other previously unclassified species of rare frog and horned beetle. Those are also named after Rizal by his European counterparts in Germany. Apogania Rizali and Rakoporis Rizali. Okay? While Rizal's anthropological works and ethnographies were extensive while in exile, one of the more interesting uh, ethnographies uh, was the rampant, uh, was on the subject of the rampant belief and practice of witchcraft um, in the central and southern Philippine islands. Okay? And he titled this document. Uh, uh, this report, this analysis, this ethnographic work, La Curación de los Hechizados, or The Cure of the Bewitched, in which Rizal describes in great detail all of his observations and analysis on not only the female witches, Manka Kulam, but the male sorcerers as well, Mangangawai, and their methods and effects on local populations and individuals in a generalized and localized fashion, of course, through the lens of a doctor. He attributes the popularity and wide-reaching influence of witchcraft in the Philippines to the lack of availability to real doctors and extremely limited medical services and practitioners. In Rizal's analysis, he states that the female witch is much more malevolent and practicing diabolical arts using sympathetic magic through the medium of harming dolls or puppets to inflict pain on an intended target. Unfortunately, much of Rizal's ethnographic and anthropological works were cut short. One can only imagine how profound and important his contributions to the field of anthropology and to the world in general would have been if we were allowed to continue down his natural path. But after spending more than four years in exile, he was summoned to stand trial in the capital, and after being found guilty in the kangaroo court, was executed by Spain on December 30th, 1896. For that book, he wrote back in Germany, No Le Me Tangere, which means touch me not. For charges of fomenting rebellion, becoming the first anthropo anthropologist martyred for his works, executed via firing squad. 
even though Rizal always advocated in public and private light for peaceful means of elevating one's peoples and culture through enlightenment and education. He ridiculed the revolution through violence, even going so far to state the importance in the resolution of bearing personal sacrifice instead of the incoming revolution, believing that a peaceful stand is the best way to avoid further suffering in the country and loss of Filipino lives. In Rizal's own words, I consider myself happy for being able to suffer a little for a cause which I believe to be sacred. I believe further that in any undertaking, the more one suffers for it, the sure its success. If this be fanaticism, may God pardon me, but my poor judgment does not see it as such. Spain had other ideas. As Rizal had become so adored and renowned internationally and in the Philippines, he had found the attention of many envious, powerful Spaniards who wanted the brightest light in Asia to be extinguished. After his execution, his peers and scholars at the Anthropological Society in Berlin at their annual meeting, 1897, Rudolf Virchow stated, To our highly esteemed member, Dr. Jose Rizal, a highly gifted and noble martyr, extolling his abilities and patriotism, Rudolf went on to narrate his life and death ending with this message about Rizal to the Anthropological Society. We lost in Rizal not only a faithful friend of Germany and German scholarship, but the only man with sufficient knowledge and resolution to open up modern thought into that far off island world. In parting, just prior to Rizal's execution, his last words were documented by the Jesuit priests. And they were that of Jesus Christ. Consumatum est. It is finished. <laughs>